Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first Transfer Talks here on the Cycling Day channel of the new season. And this is, of course, where we discuss the latest confirmation, rumors, and whatever else in terms of cycling transfers. And this is for the 2024 season. And as always, I'm joined by Mr. Gregor himself, Ewan Wilson. And Ewan, I mean, we're only in May, but there's been plenty of rumors and movements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, cycling transfers, how do you feel about it? Well, it feels like year after year, these rumors get spoken about earlier and earlier. We have plenty of riders to get through with rumors for next year, potential contract renewals or lack thereof for certain riders. So I'm intrigued to see us dive into the transfers properly for the first time in 2023. I mean, if you missed out, uh, I covered the <laughs> match of Annapol to your ET memories over on the Cycling Day and Extra. We've talked about transfers as well over on the Echelon Cycling Podcast, but this is the Cycling Dane one. So, uh, I mean, you and we might as well start with arguably the biggest team in the world, Jumbo Visma, and two big ish riders leaving. Orlov Poi is rumored to be leaving, and also Tobias Foss to one of their rivals, potentially Ineos Grandes. Yeah, well, let's begin with the first rider there, Olaf Koy, the sprinting sensation from the Netherlands who took a stage win at Paris Nice recently, is rumored by Het Latza News, that's our source, that he will be moving to DSM or an undisclosed French squad for next season. Olaf Koy rose to prominence with the Umber Visma development team, striking real success, particularly in the COVID 2020 season, but his role in the team is looking at thin on the ground as the, as the team are moving away from their sprinting successes of years gone by. So a transfer towards DSM or the undisclosed French team seems to be a strong option on the table for the Dutchman's future. He's one of the best talents. The The four days of Dunkirk, he took two stages. He's not going to be in the Tour de France team anytime soon in Jumbo Visma. He's not going to, he didn't even get selected for the Giro team either. Okay, Roglic was there, but DSM, is it not the perfect fit? They could have used him in the Giro this year. DSM definitely does look good. Dainese offers something, but Dainese, outside of that Giro win last year in Reggio Emilia, it's not quite seeing that much in terms of his top tier sprinting abilities. He's not a consistent world tour sprinting force. Yeah, I think Koi would actually fit in really well into DSM and their setup. And they also have plenty of engines to help on the lead out as well, as we've seen for Dineza and the others in years gone by. Then the second option, as, as I mentioned, was the undisclosed French team. There's four French World Tour teams, let's not forget, in Arkea, Samzik, Ege de Zer, Citroën, Cofidis, and Groupama Francaise Deja all of whom would love a sprinter among their ranks. Arkea currently have Olaf Koy's former teammate, David Decker, who left Jumbo Visma for very similar reasons last year. Uh, and they also have uh, Nasser Buani, as well as the man from Alsace, Ugo Ofsetter. They're looking towards Ash Desert Citroën, who don't really have a sprinter, Vendrame and Venturini, but neither of whom are real top-tier Grand Tour sprinting favorites. Group Parma have an aging Arno Demar, but a good young sprinting core led by Paul Penoet. And finally, Cofidis, who have Cocal, Chimolai, Consoni, but similarly, not a real Grand Tour stage winner among their ranks. Yeah, it certainly is interesting. Hopefully he does go to uh, a team that will actually appreciate him, uh, you would say. But the second story is Tobias Voss, the world champion in the time trial, friend of the channel as well. Rumored to leave uh, Jumbo Visma, first of all. And he's been linked to Ineos Grandiers. We know they love this kind of strong engine in the mountains, former top 10 in the Giro Tire, and Uno X as well. However, Jens Haugeland has said that Tobias has every right to benefit from his world title. In the short term, it doesn't make sense for us to invest in a big GC rider. So, I mean, that would indicate that uh, we know that Tobias Voss, obviously a former top Lavinia winner, wants to ride as a GC leader, some respect as well. This year, he's, as we've touched on before, been a bit more of a domestique role. He was going to be riding in support for Primoz Roglic in the Giro, but bad luck for him with COVID, etc. But you and Uno X kind of saying no, uh, but Ineos Grenadiers, is he just going to be one of these engines and slot into the Yumbo, in, Ineos Grenadiers train? Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised at the fact that Uno X is sort of blocking him out and saying it's not part of their long-term goals for either parties. It's an interesting sort of thing for a team to sort of formally back out of transfer rumors like this. But that Ineos lead that we do have, 
it makes a, a lot of sense to be as fast fits into the mold that Ineos have had over the past 10 years of a climber who can time trial very strongly. We've seen them so many times move across to Ineos. I'm thinking of even in recent years with Tame and Adamsman, similar kind of profile and similar Palmares le leading up to the point, fitting into that mountain train. Uh, it's, it seems pretty natural for Tobias Foss. Maybe he's been neglected a little bit over the past year at Jumbo Visma, not quite sort of tapping into his potential. Ineos and Jumbo, I don't quite know whether his future will be as a leader of a team at either. We also should point out Vila Flitz, who sort of point point towards Ineos Grenadiers, also point towards Bahrain and Israel Premier Tech as two other strong leads for Tobias Foss. So he seems to be in very high demand this season, could be sort of the the king of the of the transfer season this year with so many offers on the table from high profile teams. But nevertheless, in your screen days, we've focused about them a lot. Like we covered it over on the National Cycling Podcast, Carlos Rodriguez leaving. There has been kind of a revolving door with in your screen days. And I mean, yeah, we might as well start with the two big ones. Danny Martinez first. And then a uh, certain other British writer later. But Danny Martinez, you and Moving to Bora, we talked a bit about it on the Echelon Cycling Podcast. Yeah, how do you feel about this? Yeah, this is actually one of the more sort of promising and leading uh, rumors that we have on the ground at the Giro d'Italia right now. Um, this rumor seems to be making an awful lot of sense. Bora Hansko already have Sergio Aguita, a strong Colombian rider, and Danny Martinez would slot into that team's new GC focus quite comfortably. Martinez is a guy who's sort of been, um, he's been chasing these UCI World Tour one-week-long stage races over the past couple of years and he's been succeeding at it, as have Bora. So it seems like a natural fit for him to sort of help Bora gain more of these high-profile UCI one-week-long stage race victories. Similarly, going into the Grand Tour setting, Danny Martinez proved at the 2021 Giro when he was working for Egan Bernal that he is a sort of top-tier domestique on his day. Martinez at Bora, he could certainly help the likes of Sasha Vlasov as well as Jai Hindley. But for Danny Martinez, this seems to be the strongest room we have at the moment. We don't quite know if a renewal in Ineos is on the table or if there are other teams interested in Danny Martinez but Bora is the number one card as of the middle of the Giro he's such a good rider it's it's amazing he hasn't done his own GC in a Grand Tour we saw him fifth like you said uh, with Egan Bernal but I'm pretty positive about this rumor going for Danny Martinez to Bora Hansker I think it could be a really beneficial move for both parties nevertheless uh, this is the big scoop that you dug out and that is that we almost thought he was the leader. The newly crowned winner of the Tour of the Alps, Theo Gegenhardt, looks like he's going to be leaving Ineos Grenadiers. And I mean, yeah, quite surprising. It is. This rumor comes from our sources over at Gazzetta dello Sport in the Italian cycling media. And it is that Theo Gegenhardt has a strong offer from Trek Zegafredo on the table. Big, big surprise. Theo Gegenhardt, who's been rising right up to the top with Ineos Grenadiers. He took that 2020 COVID Giro Italia victory with the British squad, was offered leadership this year at the Giro as well for them. He's been offered a a, a contract elsewhere. There is also a renewal at Ineos on the table as well, uh, but the pressure is on for Theo Gegenhardt. Uh, a move to Trek Zegafredo would be interesting. They currently lack a super strong GC leader. Ever since Richie Port left that squad, they've been trying to push Chicana into that position, but Chicana's not quite there yet. So Theo Gegenhardt would slot into that squad quite well. He'd definitely be given good high level opportunities, maybe more than he would at Ineos. But I will say something here about transfer rumors that we sometimes have rumors spilled to the media by people who have an interest in said contract happening so sometimes agents will leak rumor details to the press so they generate hype so other teams then want to either up their offer or place an offer on the table this is quite a common phenomenon we've seen it before with an Ineos the Trek rumor Garrett Thomas back at the 2021 stroke 22 transfer season. We spoke about it in transfer talks back then. What happened then? Garrett Thomas stayed with the team and he's actually renewed for more years this week. So this one I would take with a pinch of salt, but Trex do seem to be interested in Theo Gegenhardt. But with Ineos potentially losing Danny Martinez, it's in their best strong, strong interest to place a higher offer for Theo Gegenhardt to keep him on the squad. But I mean, he's not exactly the their domestique role he's one of their leaders one of their prized assets british guy british team they want him 
So, I mean, I wouldn't really go to Trek. Trek did, can't offer the same level of support in the mountains, in the in a Grand Tour. You can just see it now, like in the Giro, like Gary Thomas, he's got so much support in the mountains. Are Trek actually going to offer any of that? I don't think so. So right now where Teo Gegenhardt is, I think he should stay with Ineos Grandiers. And I'm pretty sure Ineos Grandiers can rival whatever money Trek's afraid of on the table as well. I wholeheartedly agree. I think it's probably best for him to say Ineos. A rumor getting leaked to generate hype, of which it definitely has. I mean, technically, he has ridden for that under-23 team. If you trace back Trek to Radio Shack and the Livestrong team with the Hagen Berman. But I mean, that's, yeah, that, it doesn't really matter. But nevertheless, there's two riders, two Spanish riders actually linked to the team. Uh, one of them you feel quite highly about, but uh, and one return as well. But Carlos Verona, you and he's kind of been here, there and everywhere. And the movie star rider being linked to Ineos Grandes. Exactly. Here, there and everywhere. I think this, this could be a really interesting move. Carlos Verona, of course, the Spanish rider who took a stage win at last year's Critium de Dauphiné, top level climber, super domestique at Movistar and also before hit that time at Quick Step as well, where he sort of felt a little bit out of place. But Carlos Barona to Ineos Grenadiers, quite a promising move for Barona, especially for the Ineos Grenadiers mountain train. This this should be a, a match made in heaven. But I mean, the other rider is Mikael Lander. I think we're both fans of him. We've seen great Lander at Astana. We've seen great Lander at Ineos as well. Well, he was kind of shackled behind uh, Froome at the Tour de France. Barry Victoria still achieved a bit, but yeah, how do you see him if he actually does come back to Ineos Grandiers and would he add anything? We're missing out great Lander and Movistar. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I kind <laughs> of just blagged out that, blagged that out. Ugh, it's not Astana Lander. That, I've, ugh. Astana Lander. But he claimed that he was stronger at the 2017 Tour de France. Well, we'll never know. Given that he was riding for Chris Froome, who was the eventual winner of that race, he was only one second off the podium. Story of Lander's life, just missing out. This move, I'm not like 100% convinced by it. I don't understand why he'd move back. I think Landers maybe still got another year or two in him as a GC leader. Bahrain have given him an awful lot of opportunities to really chase out his GC successes. And I think maybe some of the most consistent Lander performances we've had have been over the past couple of years whilst he's been riding for Bahrain, to be honest, Scott. Even sort of looking at the 2020 Tour de France, the 2021 sort of pre-Giro season, we forget about the Giro. And this year as well, he's already been riding pretty strongly in 2023. And I'm excited to see what the next chapter of that story would bring. So I really don't see this Ineos move happening. But anyway, um, we'll kind of move into another team now, Uno X Pro Cycling. They've been rumored to be signing Andreas Lechnerson. And also another Dane in, in my, well, not another Dane, another Scandinavian in this Danish Norwegian mold that they have for riders, Magnus Court Nielsen. So, I mean, you and we might as well start with Lechnerson. He's, well, he just dropped out of top five uh, after stage 16 on the Giro d'Italia, but Still really showing some good form, the rider from Tomsu. And I mean, he's a former Uno X rider. Granted, they weren't as good as they are now, but does this make sense or not? It could make sense. I think Uno X are looking like they might be a staple of the pro continental scene, at least for the next two years. They've got their Tour de France invite. If they live up to the expectations of their invites, they could be a staple for Paris, Nice, Dauphiné, and so forth for the years to come. That would give Lignesson a really good shot at performing. He'll miss out on the Giro, which he's performed so highly at this year. But at the same time, Lignesson, if he gets top 10 of this Giro, his stock will rise greatly. He's immense immensely talented. We've been saying this for a while that he's maybe one of the brightest Norwegian talents out there. Of course, in, Uno X would like to sweep up the brightest Norwegian talent. There might still be more offers on the table to come later on in the season. He left Uno X at a certain point and he might not think about returning. It would be nice as well for, for him to return, but in order for him to sort of fully fulfill his um, his potential on the world tour, I don't think that's possible with Uno X, given that they're a pro continental squad. The schedule is still limited. They're not into the Ita they're not invited to the Italian races, which he shows that he can perform highly in. I'm not quite convinced on that front. The Mountain Court rumor actually came out over the past couple of days, courtesy of our sources once again at Gitzata Dello Sport. That rumor is interesting. He's been very successful at the Grand Tours. He's now got his trilogy of stage wins at, at all the 
Grand Tours, the Giro, the Tour, and the Vuelta. Maybe he's looking towards different things over the next couple of years, and Uno X could provide that as he winds down his calendar. Well, we won't have known the communication between Uno X and Manu Sport Nielsen, but I assume that they have, like, they would have shown him the plan of what they're going to do. They're probably able to match EF Education's like salary for him as well they signed alexander Kristov on quite a long deal as well and according to intermarche they couldn't rival the bid that uno x was doing so i think there's a lot of money behind it uh, uno x is a oil company as well so they they have they have some money and i think manus court nielsen in that environment as well you would be in a danish norwegian environment if if they really laid out okay our goal is to go world tour if he knows that's the goal would you be that worried? I don't think so. Yeah, I think it, he could help them. He'll also get invited into the Tour de France, the French stage races, and some pretty high-profile one-day races. I think for Manus Court, that works quite well. Unlike Lignesund, I don't think he he's looking to go to a Tirreno Adriatico or a Giro in the years to come. I think for Court, it could work pretty well. And for Uno X, they'll be desperately trying to get a Tour de France stage over the next two or so years to really staple the, the, their name potentially to help them move up into the world tour so this one I, i'm pretty positive towards i wait and see if there's more offers to come onto the table the thing is Maunus courts worked so well at ef over the past couple of years you know you, you never know where he's thinking personally he's an interesting personality interesting character he might be thinking you know what i've completed everything i wanted in the sport let me just go to new x be, be with my scandinavian guys and boost up their their reputation and their their sort of points value for I the still, world tour battle i still think he could achieve a lot in uno x it's not like he's going to israel premier tech it's our premier tech get, get, get invited to multiple grand tours in the yeah year. but <laughs> like yeah they have also just come down from the world tour but i mean we'll see what happens i think the lechnison is quite interesting that he's gonna re- well if he returns to that uh team and if if they're saying that they don't want to sign Foss because he's a GC rider and he's a bit long-term project, is that because they were looking at Legnison or is it because, yeah, I don't know. But then the, the Uno X comments came a while, well, the, the yeah, Foss yeah, comments yeah. came yeah. a while before the Legnison uh, rumors have emerged. But I think we'll wait and see what happens after the Giro. We'll see where Legnison ends up. And I think that'll probably open up another chapter of the Legnison transfer stories. But anyway, and you have a few transfers you kind of want to rattle off before we come to the final rider uh, of this episode. Yes, yeah, so just going into some some of the small, smaller or intriguing links that we do have. Back in April, Gazzetta dello Sport were reporting that Jonathan Milan, the current Mala Ciclamina wearer of the Giro, was not getting his contract extended by Team Bahrain Victorious. Therefore, the strongest offer on the table was from Trek Zegafredo. Bear in mind, this rumor was from back in April before the GDA. We saw that he won a stage of the Giro and is fighting for the Malachi Clamino in a good position to take that all the way to the end. So the progress in that one might change. Also, Vincenzo Albanese, rider for Eolo Cometa, solid top 10 rider in sprints and hilly stages at the GDA. He's rumored to be going to EF Education First easy post similarly Matteo Jorgensen is rumored to both EF Education easy post and Yumbo Visma we spoke about this on the Echelon Cycling podcast and we also bring you the update that Yumbo Visma is the strongest lead we have similarly now moving across to Astana we have Enoch Malubran the African champion who currently rides for the Italian Green Project squad is rumored to be moving up to Astana on the world tour level Antonio Tiberi who had a high profile divorce with Trek Segafredo is rumored to be making a transfer across to Astana. Crossing back to Team Bahrain victorious, Gino Meda, who had a fabulous Vuelta España back in 2021, you'll recall he is rumored to be leaving the squad and at the moment, Tudor Pro Cycling, the Swiss Pro Continental squad, is the strongest offer on the table. So there we go, Scott. That's a bit of a roundup of all the other stories we can touch on. You and the one we're going to finish on is a man who like Tiberi, hasn't got a team. Nairo Quintana has been linked with Bahrain Victorious. We spoke about, we mentioned here and there and everywhere that Team Corotech were kind of rumored very strongly at the end of the season. But Bahrain Victorious, you and I mean, Nairo Quintana is just doing nothing right now. It's a shame, really. Yeah, I mean, there is a transfer rumor on the table its strength and reliability i find questionable Uh, it comes from the colombian website semana 
who is suggesting that Sudal Quickstep have a great interest in signing Nairo Quintana. It's rogue, I will say that. We know Sudal Quickstep are looking to bolster their general classification setup to help Remco Avenepoel. They've brought in a number of high-profile climbers to do so over the past two seasons. Quintana would probably be the most high-profile rider if you were to move him. But, I mean, for him, he's also been struggling at finding a, a contract on the World Tour level in general. I heard from someone last season that Nairo Quintana was, I mean, his name was somewhat blacklisted by ASO, who organized the Tour de France, Paris-Nice, and other high-profile races, that um, they weren't wanting Quintana to arrive due to his questionable history with performance-enhancing drugs or substances that are questionable. So I'm not convinced Quintana will make it back onto the world tour level in his career. The pro continental level and the Giro seems to be a more realistic pathway given that we have this source telling us that ASO do not want him near their races. I mean the other one, the other link was Bahrain Victorious and that is on the back of this Miguel Lande leaving, which I mean if you if there was no shade over Nairo Quintana, it would make complete sense. But yeah, it is that question mark, unfortunately. But who knows, really? Uh, we'll wait and see equally, as we spoke about on the echelon. Uh, Miguel Angel Lopez is also without a World Tour contract right now. But it's a shame, really. It's kind of the erosion of the Colombian golden generation just disappearing, unfortunately. Anyways, that's it for our first transfer talks here of the 2024 season make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and comment down below what you have thought of any transfer or if there's any we've missed out and of course make sure to check out the website where we have all the different transfer rumors extensions whatever on our database so with that thank you very much for watching and we will see you around